first question, can you tell us who you are and how you came to be involved in Sound of Fury? Um, my name is Turkey Thompson and um, Jamie, who I guess was producing this, um, he used to work at the Egg Theatre in Bath, which I've done loads of stuff for. Um, we did a play which we took to Edinburgh, um, to the Edinburgh Festival, and then Polar came there as well and did I did a project with him, so I knew them. Um, and then, yeah, they got me down to this day, which all the other people were at as well, including kind of loads of others, um, all to do with Shakespeare, which was kind of basically a bunch of cynics, um, all really, yeah, all who love words but never really got the whole Shakespeare thing. Um, plus, like, Sis was there and everyone, yeah, no, it's really cool. And then, uh, yeah, Jamie gave me a call about this um, a while ago kind of listed off the people that were in it and basically a list of my idols so I was kind of like, oh okay, um, yeah, and then told me I was getting paid for it as well, it was silly really, um, but yeah, no, it's been really fun. Could you tell us a bit about the show itself, what was in it, what was it like to perform in it? The show was, um, yeah, we, it was basically five soliloquies that we got given individually um, and yeah, it was really new polar went nuts on this um kind of put so so much thought into it we got emails of just like reams and reams of his thoughts on how this needs to be more than kind of a spoken word gig where someone would go and watch it and be like that's really impressive uh that's been really well done cool um but actually kind of affect you and like it was important that it be real time so it was literally just a kind of thoughts kind of organised thoughts in that you've written them and they're crafted but it's thoughts that have to be happening as you're saying them and that the audience be um, be kind of there with you as opposed to you performing to them it'd be them kind of yeah them going on that journey with you and like you need them as opposed to kind of want to share with them. Can you talk to us a bit about the link between Shakespeare and the spoken word or hip hop? Uh, my one or everyone's? Yours, everyone's, generally, what's the link between, what's the relationship between Shakespeare's words? Yeah, as Polar said earlier, um, the soliloquies are kind of, it's sort of becoming clear that they're kind of the epitome of what spoken word can be. Um, I, yeah, I found that difficult to realise because it takes so much looking into them to fully kind of grasp the genius of them and I'm still not quite there. If I spend half an hour being explained to um, by Sis or Polar, then I kind of go, oh my god, that is actually ridiculous, how did a person think of that? Um, and it's all the way through as well, it's faultless, it's just faultless, I can't get my head around it at all. Um, but yeah, no, that's what kind of spoken word could be, but if we're doing it, we're never going to end up speaking like him, it's just not going to happen, so it can be much more accessible to people at the moment. Um, but still with the same kind of intent and the same um, process behind it. Um, yeah, it could be just better, I guess. So do you, and if you do, how do you think Shakespeare's relevant to young people today? Shakespeare, yeah, Shakespeare, it represents a lot. Um, uh, I'm still struggling to work out how how imperative it is that it's Shakespeare as opposed to some other amazing language. It's becoming more clear as I'm explaining more about it because it's incredible. Um, but yeah, no, it's just language in general. Like, I'm biased because I love it. Um, but language is just helpful for everything, really. And the more imaginative you can be with it, the more you can express yourself. Like Sis said earlier, if you're, if you're kind of, if you have a load of thoughts and then you can say them to someone, those thoughts are kind of, that's, a, that's sort of like the journey we had doing the pieces today, those thoughts kind of sort themselves out just by way of talking them through and organising them. Um, if you have a load of thoughts and they're just stuck in your head bouncing around, you just end up getting frustrated and doing whatever. Um, last, last question, um, do you have a favourite line of Shakespeare, if so what is, is it, and what's your favourite line from Sand and Fury? I don't know, I don't know a lot of Shakespeare, I've got to be honest. Polar's thing, he's, he spent a good kind of half an hour out of our two days explaining to me what it meant. It was 
the weight of this sad time we must obey. Speak what we feel, not what we ought to say. The oldest hath borne most, and we that are young shall never see so much, nor live so long. Which, he said if he was ten, year, ten or five years younger, he would have got in a tattoo on his back. He's well into that. Um, so that, yeah, kind of, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Poor. Um, but yeah, relating to spoken word, that's kind of, I can't remember, but it was deep when he told it to me. It was like really deep. Um, but yeah, out of the Edmund ones, it was all good. Um, I grow, I prosper. That's kind of concise, like just nice sentiment, really. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cool, man.